bolted up the steps and I don't know how he managed to get his hand in my hair so fast, but he had his hand on the back of my head, my hair, and kind of was yanking me down and hit me in the face with this cast he had. When someone is telling the truth, we expect them to use first person singular and past tense. We also expect them to only talk about things that happened. It's a red flag when someone tells us about something that didn't happen. It means that the speaker is sensitive about that detail. Hello, detectives. In a previous video, we looked at a story Amber Heard told about Johnny Depp kicking her on an airplane. In this video, let's look at an even crazier story she told about Johnny attacking her in their penthouse apartment to see if it's true. Without further ado, let's listen. We were screaming at each other. Uh, at some point, uh, we were upstairs in penthouse three and, and we kind of get into a... a, a, a how do you describe it? Um, pushing each other, you know? And I, I just remember um, being so mad at him for, for cheating on me and doing so in this way, like right after the wedding and then I, right after my wedding, go to see him and then Australia happens and it just felt like everything came crashing down and I was so hurt. Anyway, we, I, I break out of his grasp at some point and I go into my sister's room. When someone tells us a true story, we expect them to tell us what happened as they remember it. It should be like watching a parade go by when they think about what happened. Information should be easy to follow and it should come in order. Because the speaker is putting themselves into the story, we expect them to use the first person singular, I. And since the event really did happen, they should talk about it in the past tense. If the speaker does not use the first person past tense or takes too long to say something, it's likely they're not speaking from memory. They might be editing out something important, or they might just be fabricating that part of the story. We can already see that Amber's story isn't as smooth as a parade going by in front of her. She started by telling us how she and Johnny were pushing each other, and then she went back in time to tell us why she was upset. If this were a movie, it would have been a flashback, but that's not how true stories work. It's rare for people telling true stories to tell us things out of order or to explain why something happened. If someone is telling a true story, they usually just say what happened in the order it happened. Because Amber went back in time to explain why she and Johnny were fighting, I'm already suspicious that she's making up this part of the story or she's leaving out something important. For example, like the fact that maybe she attacked him and not the other way around. Because this is the only sign of lying so far, I'm going to let it slide. In statement analysis, we need more than one sign that someone is lying before we can be sure that they are. Let's keep listening. The apartments in the ECB are connecting, at least three of them are, and they connect from upstairs only. So you could get from Johnny and I's apartment into the neighboring apartment where Whitney, my sister, was staying at the time. And then you could go from that apartment into penthouse five again still on on the top floor so i went through johnny's office which is how you access the door that gets you into whitney the neighboring apartment where whitney was my sister and i w went in there and woke her up crying screaming saying what am i going to do catching your honor hearsay sorry all right i'll sustain no, no, i don't know that was offered to prove the truth of the matter uh, i'll sustain the event all right. sustain the okay so you went to Whitney's. Don't tell the jury what you said to her, but what happened next? Um, uh, Johnny comes into penthouse four and um, grabs me. I don't know what, why, I don't know. As I already said, we expect people to use the first person past tense when they're telling the truth. If the person telling the story starts to use present tense verbs, it's likely that they're making it up. That's because they're making up the story in the moment. So they use present tense verbs by accident. Amber jumped back and forth between the past and the present tense in this part of the story. She said, I went through Johnny's office where Whitney was. I went in there. I woke her up. Johnny, 
comes in, Johnny grabs me. People with PTSD may talk about traumatic events in the present tense, but switching back and forth like Amber did is highly unusual even for them. Also, Amber only switched the present tense when she was talking about things that Johnny did. I think she talks about Johnny's actions in the present tense because they never happened. She's making them up in the present, which is why she's speaking in the present tense. Amber did the same thing in my first video about her, where she talked about Johnny kicking and slapping her on an airplane. He sits down in front of me at one point, and because I'm not answering him, I was looking out of the window, and he slaps my face. And his friend is in our proximity. And I... It didn't hurt my, it didn't hurt my face. It just felt embarrassed. If you do that to me in front of people. Amber jumps back and forth between the past and present in this part of the story. The funny thing is, and she doesn't realize it, but she only talks about things that Johnny did in the present tense. I think that's because she's making up these parts of the story. Casey Anthony is another liar who switched to present tense when she was making something up. I got off of work, left Universal, driving back to pick up Kaylee like a normal day. I show up to the apartment, knock on the door, nobody answers. I call Zanaya the cell phone and it's out of service. It says that the, no, the phone is no longer in service. Excuse me. In this part of the story, Casey switched from the past to the present tense. She said, I got off work, I left Universal, I show up, I call Zanaya, it is out of service, it says the phone is no longer in service. This is a red flag. Does the fact that Amber Heard jumped between the present and the past mean she's lying? No, not necessarily. But it's like a tell in poker. If I see someone doing their tell, I'll bet accordingly. At this point, I'm betting this story is fake. Let's keep listening to see if Amber can change our minds. I don't know what he was doing, um, but at one moment, I um, kind of i am aware that my sister's somewhere nearby and I... I thought about that. I just remember thinking about that. And he, um, I, I, I remember getting kind of free from, from, from Johnny and, and he left or he walked out of the room. When you say free from Johnny, what if any connection, did you have the physical connection before that? Well, I mean, I'm, you know, trying to stand up for myself and Johnny would at that stage in our relationship it was it, he would just throw me shove me hit me in the face I mean it was just like all I could do is just try to try to fight back or try to not get more hurt than not doing anything would have certainly left me uh, I don't really recall um, specifics I I, I I remember at one point um, he had his uncasted hand in my hair and I was looking at the carpet. I don't know, I don't know what happened immediately after that, but I remember he left. He was out of the room for a while. As I've said time and time again in my videos, people don't lie as much as you might expect. It's very stressful, even for psychopaths. So most of the time, if someone wants to fool you, they'll just leave stuff out. For instance, they'll choose the words very carefully to avoid technically lying. Amber told us that at one point, Johnny Depp had his uncasted hand in her hair and she was looking at the carpet. She wants us to think that he grabbed her by the hair and was pulling her head down or maybe dragged her forward, but she never actually said that's what happened, so we can't assume it. This may seem like a minor detail to you, but statement analysis 101. We are not interpreting the subject's word to hear what isn't said. Instead, we are only pointing out what the subject has put into words. If we go by Amber's own words, all she said was that at one point, Johnny had his hand in her hair and she was looking at the carpet. For all we know, his hand may have been in her hair because she was charging him like a bull. That would also explain why she was looking at the carpet. The point is we don't know what happened because Amber was careful not to tell us. Unless she directly tells us that Johnny grabbed a fistful of her hair and yanked her down to the ground, we cannot assume that's what happened. We saw Amber do something similar in my first video about her. She wanted to tell us that Johnny kicked a chair into her hip without actually committing to the statement. As I get up, he kind of kicks the swivel chair into my hip, or kind of just hits me. And I look at him, and he asks me, what? What are you going to do about it? We, 
I just stared at him. I just stared. This is known as hedging language. Amber is very careful with her words when she talks about Johnny kicking a chair into her hip. He kind of kicked the chair and it kind of just hit her. Did he kick the chair into her or not? Hedging language usually means that someone's lying because they're not committing to their statement. Let's keep listening. He was out of the room for a while. Uh, I uh, don't know how we got into... I think I heard him in P5. Again, this is the neighboring apartment of that. So there's P4 in between and P5 is the, the corner. And that apartment was empty basically. And so the, 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 I used it, the top bedrooms, the, the bedrooms on the top floor as my closet. And I had all these clothing racks and shoe racks and stuff like that in there. And then it had another level, the mezzanine, which is an over, you know, it hung over the rest of the bottom floor. Uh, and I use that as my office. And the bottom floor is, of course, the living room with just some ca sparsely decorated, just some big couches and, and a low table. And I am, go on to, I hear him in um, Penthouse 5. Uh, and, oh, on the lower level also is another painting studio, like painting area of mine. So I go in there because I hear him and he's screaming, but I don't know why, I don't know who he's, I, I, my, my understanding was he was screaming at me, but I wasn't in that apartment. I could hear him. And when I heard him, uh, I, I came into the into penthouse five and I have to go down the stairs and Mark Twain said if you tell the truth you don't have to remember anything since none of the things liars make up ever happened they often contradict themselves that's what happens when you don't have a real memory to rely on for example Amber started off this story by telling us that Johnny Depp hunted her down in her sister's room and grabbed her and attacked her then somehow she broke free he left so what would we expect her to do now if she were truly a victim we'd expect her to maybe call the police or go back to her sister's room and lock the door or maybe leave the house for the night and go somewhere else. Amber didn't say she did that. She said that she followed Johnny's screams instead. We would not expect that from someone who has been attacked. It's what the aggressor would do. I think Amber is letting out some of the truth here. I think her words are telling us that she was following Johnny around the house and hitting him because she thought he was cheating on her. At some point, uh, we were upstairs in penthouse three and, and we kind of get into a, 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 a how do you describe it um pushing each other you know and i, I just remember um being so mad at him for uh, cheating on me and doing so in this way like right after the wedding and then i right after my wedding go to see him and then australia happens and it just felt like everything came crashing down and i was so hurt from what I've seen, I think this is how Amber acts most of the time. In the first video I made about her, I thought she might have done the same thing on Johnny Depp's private plane. I don't know how many times I moved seats. I wish I did. I don't. I remember moving more than once and Johnny came to me each time, not the other way around. So why did Amber say she doesn't remember how many times she changed seats? I think it's because she's sensitive about changing seats. Specifically, I think it's because she's the one who switched seats to follow Johnny around the plane. I don't think she switched seats to get away from him. Let's keep listening. And I went down the stairs to the mezzanine level where my office was and I could see him and a, a security guard and Debbie, um, the nurse, and um, he was sitting on the on the sofa um, at when I first walked into the room, and he kind of stood up, was drinking a um, Red Bull, and screaming at me. And uh, Debbie came up the stairs because I'm screaming back at him. She came up the stairs, I think. And while we were, she came up. I I I'm supposed to kind of comfort me. And while I was up on the mezzanine floor, Whitney came down. And um, he threw the Red Bull can up at 
uh, me, certainly, but it kind of either hit or narrowly missed Debbie. As I said, people don't like to lie. So if they need to tell a lie to avoid being found guilty, they'll often use words that weaken their commitment to the lie. This is known as hedging language. Here, Amber said that Debbie came up to the mezzanine, I suppose, to kind of comfort me. I suppose and kind of are examples of hedging. Why did Amber use these words? Most likely because she's lying and she knows it. I think the truth is somewhere in between. Debbie did go up the steps, but it wasn't to comfort Amber. It was to stop her from attacking Johnny. I think that's what Whitney was doing as well. For you, the viewer, here's a quick way to spot hedging language. Ask yourself which you would prefer to hear. I love you or I love you plus a hedging term. For example, which would you prefer? I love you or I suppose I love you. Or consider which of these is better. I love you or I love you kind of. Once you look at it that way, it's easy to see how much hedging language weakens the words around it. And I said he, I called him a and and said something about, you know, I'm screaming at him angrily. Um, I, I, I at least called him a, a I, I don't know what else I said, but I was screaming at him because he threw this can at me and everything else that had happened. And when I did that, he bolted up the stairs. <laughs> and, you know, there's only, I mean, he, he was up, he was up the first flight of stairs. Again, I'm on the mezzanine, which is in between two flights of stairs. He bolted up the steps. Um, and I, I, I don't know, I don't know how he managed to get his hands in my hair so fast, but he had his um, hand on the back of my, my head, my hair, and kind of was yanking me down and um, hit me in the face with this cast he had. Um, I just remember this, this brief struggle we had before we kind of break away Whitney, my sister, um, all of a sudden put herself in between Johnny and I. As I already said, when someone is telling the truth, we expect them to use first person singular and past tense. We also expect them to only talk about things that happened. It's a red flag when someone tells us about something that didn't happen. It means that the speaker is sensitive about that detail. Amber said that she doesn't know how Johnny got his hand in her hair so quickly. Unless someone asked Amber directly, how long did it take Johnny to do that? She has no reason to talk about something she doesn't remember. This this may seem like a small thing, but people do not usually talk about things they don't remember. This is because if they can't remember something, they don't even think to talk about it in the first place. So why did Amber say that she doesn't know how Johnny got his hand in her hair so fast? I think it's because it never happened. In the first video I made about Amber, she did the same thing. I don't know how many times I moved seats. I wish I did. I don't. I remember moving more than once. This may seem like a small detail to you, but it's very unusual for people who are telling the truth to talk about things they don't remember. That's because if they don't remember something, talking about it doesn't occur to them in the first place. Let's keep listening because there's one more crucial way we can tell if this is a made up story. She just threw herself like in the line of fire or whatever. She just all of a sudden was there and was trying to get Johnny to stop. Um, her back was to the staircase and Johnny swings at her and I just see my little sister with her back on face, her back to the staircase and Johnny swings at her and I don't even wait, don't even wait for any other, I don't hesitate, I don't wait, I just in my head instantly think of Kate Moss and the stairs and I swung at him. In all of my relationship to date with Johnny, I hadn't landed a blow. And I, for the first time, hit him. Like, actually hit him. Square in the face. He didn't push my sister down the stairs. And all of my time, all my time of being in that relationship to that point, Hadn't even landed one on Johnny. 
Sure, I tried to fight back, threw my arms, flailed my arms, hit whenever I, I could to try to block blows myself, but never landed anything. And Johnny kind of looked stunned and then laughed at me and then lunged at me again. And before I know it, uh, security stepped in between us and, 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 and pulled Johnny away. Uh, and I went upstairs with my sister, and um, we locked the, the the door, and I could just hear all this commotion happening in Penthouse 5. I could hear them raging, destroying my things. I could hear it. Um, and at some point, I saw it the next day. There's one more very useful way we can use statement analysis to figure out if Amber's story is true or not. We can see how the story is put together. How long does Amber talk about the event, what happened before it, and what happened after it? Studies show that the ends of fake stories are shorter than true stories. This is because people who lie don't care if the stories they make up have a nice, elaborate, detailed ending. They want to set the stage for the event. They want to tell you about the event, but then they don't really care about telling you what happened after it, right? Once I tell you about the event, their job is done. Amber's story about what happened that night doesn't really have much of an ending. She spent a lot of time setting up the fight on the mezzanine by telling us the layout of the penthouse, by telling us how she and Johnny were chasing each other around the penthouse, and how they were arguing about him cheating on her. Then she described in great detail, step by step, what happened during the attack, from before Johnny threw the Red Bull can at her, to when he ran up the stairs and hit her in the face with his cast, until Whitney, like a hero, jumped in between them and broke them up. Up and how Amber landed that victorious blow right in Johnny's face. But what happened after? Johnny looked stunned. Guards came. Amber went to her sister's room, shut the door, locked it, and then she heard him yelling all over the house. The end. Did she have to sneak out to the kitchen to get a band-aid to bandage her wounds? Did she stay up all night tossing and turning worried that he might burst back into the room and attack her again? Did she have to lay on her side because her scalp was sore from when Johnny pulled her hair? Did Debbie have an injury from the Red Bull can hitting her and everyone had to go attend to her? Nothing. This is typical of stories that are made up. Amber wanted to set the stage for Johnny attacking her. She wanted to put all the motivations in and give us all the layout of the apartment and how it happened. And once she had convinced the jury that Johnny attacked her and gave a bunch of detail about where it happened, she didn't bother making up anything else. It reminds me of Meghan Markle's story about a fire occurring in Archie's room. She spent a bunch of time telling us a bunch of details, but the ending was very vague and very short. We get in the car and they say, there's been a fire at the residence. What? There's been a fire in the baby's room. We get back our amazing nanny Lauren, who we'd had all the way until we, um, in Canada here. Lauren in floods of tears, everyone's in tears, everyone's shaken. And what did we have to do? Mm -hmm. Go out and do another official engagement. Megan's story about the fire doesn't really have much of a conclusion. She supposedly comes back, sees Lauren crying and leaves again. Did anyone call the police, the fire brigade? Did any of Archie's stuff get burned up? Nothing. This is typical of stories that are made up. Casey Anthony is another example of someone who had a very short ending to a made up story. I got off of work, left Universal, driving back to pick up Kaylee like a normal day. And I show up to the apartment, knock on the door, nobody answers. So I call the night of the cell phone and it's out of service. I sit down on the steps and wait for a little bit to see if maybe it was just a fluke, if something happened. And time passed, I didn't hear from anyone, and I ended up going to my boyfriend Anthony's house, who lives in Sutton Place. Casey's story about her searching for her missing daughter doesn't really have much of a conclusion. She spent two sentences telling us that she left work and went to her nanny's house, only to discover that no one was home. Then she spent about 10 sentences describing her search for Kaylee. Finally, she spent one sentence wrapping up the entire story. I ended up going to my boyfriend Anthony's house who lives in Sudden Place. That's it. Was she too nervous to eat dinner when she got to Anthony's? Did she toss and turn that night in bed, wondering if her daughter was dead or alive? Did she wake up every few minutes to check her phone, hoping to see a message from Zenaida? Nothing. Do I think Amber Heard made this story up? Yes. Moreover, I think she reversed the roles of who was attacking who. I believe she was antagonizing him because she believed he cheated on her. Check out my first Amber video here. Until next time, stay true.